Hey guys, Israel here, and let's discuss the repository pattern. What is it? What problems does it solve? And what does it help with? As well, I have a code example with a .NET 5 API, which uses Entity Framework and a SQL database. So let's get into it. What is the repository pattern? It's a strategy when building your API to abstract the data access layer from the controllers. So that instead of just having a controller directly go into the database and access all the data, you have a repository. And the repository acts as sort of a bridge between the models and your controllers. And it is what's actually handling the data to just kind of abstract it out from controller to then the repository. So what does it solve? Well, it allows you to decouple your dependencies. Coupling is the level of interdependence between code. And you really don't want high coupling. You want to usually try and keep it low because you don't want all your code to be so codependent and intertwined with each other. Because you want, hey, in the future there's a change or something happens you don't want to have to go through all the controllers to make a change. You just maybe want to go to that interface or repository and that, you know, gets injected everywhere else. So you only make one centralized change instead of a lot of them, you know? Another thing solved by this pattern is it allows your code to be more testable. It makes it so you can actually mock or test the controller by mocking the injected repo or mocking the injected entity framework DB context. And being able to unit test your code is a very important skill to have and something very good to do on real world projects, whether for a company or for clients. So now let's jump into an example of how you would set up a project to have this pattern. So we're now diving into the project. So how do I set up a project with the repository pattern? Well, first you have to create a new project. So let's jump in and create a fresh project in Visual Studio. We're just going to call it repository pattern. And let me put it in the correct spot. Let's create this project. We are just going to create a web API. So we have this project right here now. It is open and set up. So you can see that we just have very basic stuff. I'm going to actually delete the defaults that it comes with because I'm not going to use them. So first things first, I'm going to also create a data folder. This is where we're going to end up having our interfaces, our DB context, our repositories are going to go in there. And then I'm also going to have a models folder where we're going to have our one model. So now that we have our folder set up, we are now going to create our employee controller. So right here, we're just going to have a quick new controller. It is going to be called employee controller because that is what we are handling in this, you know, sample project that I'm creating here. We have our employee controller that we're creating. So now that we have this project, we are not doing views. We don't have any of that. This is strictly going to be an API controller. So with this API controller, that's all we really care about. So now the next thing is we're going to have our constructor, which is going to be an employee controller. That does this. And we now have a constructor. So now that we have a controller, let's create our interface, our repository, and the model for who, what an employee is. So let's go, first of all, go in here. We have a new item. And I believe there should be some sort of interface that we can create. There we go. So you want to call I employee repository. This is going to be the interface for the repository. So it is going to be a public facing interface with four methods our get post put and delete as you can see it doesn't know what an employee is because we haven't created that yet so let's go to our model let's add in our employee class it's going to be an employee and now what is an employee an employee is going to be someone with an id a first name a last name and an h so that is what we're going to have here and now once we have that we can go back to our repo we can bring that one in now that we have it we have our repository these are the four methods that our repository will actually do and this controller will call the repository and let the repository deal with accessing that data from the database so now to be able to put a repository in this controller, we have to actually create the repository. So now, like I was saying earlier, let us create a new item. And we're actually going to have a repository that we're going to create.
employee repository. So I actually want to create two folders here. I want to just have this uh, look a little better, more professional, because if you were to have a lot of repositories, a lot of interfaces, uh, you would not want to have them just kind of all scattered around. So I would much rather have my interfaces here and my repositories in their specific folder. So once we've created our repository and now that we have it, what we need to do here is we need to say what we are going to implement in this. So we need to bring in the I employee repository because that is the repository or the interface that we are going to be creating here. So let's bring that one in. So now as you can see, we need to create uh, a few methods. So now when we start this, we now need our public list of employees that we're going to be returning. We have that we're going to get. And now that is our first method. And now we need to do the same for put and post, except slightly different put and post are both going to return employees. And then our delete is going to return a bool. Let me just go back to confirm that. A list, employee, employee, and a bool. Yes. A list, employee, employee, and a bool. Cool. So this is also going to need an ID. This is going to need an employee. We can call it E. And another employee that we can just leave as E. So now that we have all of this, this is going to implement this and we have this correct. So now we need to tie them together. We need to tell the project that this is a service that we're going to have to inject into our controller. So we have to register that in the configure services section. So in the configure services section, we can just do something as simple as adding a scoped reference, something like this. Very easy to do. Here we are. We say that, you know, we're tying our employee repository to the I employee, you know, repository interface and we're adding it. So now the whole application knows and it can be injected wherever it wants. So now we go back to our controller and we need to add our repository because we want to be able to access these methods, which we will finish in a little bit. Don't worry, you guys don't stress out about the squiggly lines. So let's first, you know, add in our employee repo here. So now we have this reference. Let's get the files in here as we need. And now let's add in, we need to initialize this stuff. So let's go in I employee repository. We're going to have an employee reference here. And now we have this injected correctly into our application. And now let's start creating, you know, the methods and the endpoints that the front part or the front end would end up hitting. We can now move on to our methods. So our get method is going to look something like this, where we get our employee repo right here. All you have to call is employee repo dot get. Look how clean this looks, which is a try catch. And then we're returning our status code or a bad request to our front end, wherever it is. Very clean. You don't have a lot of clutter and your controller here does not access directly the database, which is good. Now, what is our post going to look like? Okay, so now that we have our get here, you guys can see try catch very easy. Now let's move on to what our post method is going to look like. Our post method again, is going to be a very straightforward, really just a lot of checks. So we're gonna have our post, you know, from body, we get our employee, then we're going to have another try catch just in case there's any exceptions, anything is thrown while this is going to run. We're going to first just check our model. Is it valid? Obviously, check the front end code, you want to check that, you know, the client side is giving you exactly what you need for an employee. And then we're just going to ship it off to our repo and that's it. Not a lot of complicated stuff. You're just really just checking everything, making sure everything coming back is good. And you're just shipping it off for the employee repo to actually handle any processing that may need to happen. So, and the same thing is going to kind of be true for put as well. Put, you're also just going to do a try catch. You're going to get it, check from the employee that's coming from the body, the client, and then you're just going to send it off again. So very straightforward there very simple and then finally we have our delete method which is going to be right here again delete you're going to get an id and then you're just 
wrapping in a try catch and then you're looking at the employee repo and being like, all right, let's go delete that by whatever ID that we just got passed back. And now that we have our controller set up with our employee repository, with these methods, we now need the methods in the employee repository to do something. So let's go to our repository and set that up finally. So we can get rid of all these areas at the bottom. So first of all, our employee repository is going to be the thing that interacts with our database. Our database is what? We need a database context. Our database context is going to be Entity Framework, and that's how we're going to connect and actually get to the database that we're going to use. So let's go ahead and actually create our DB context. So again, we are going to need a new file here. We're going to need a new class. I'm going to call this class Application DB Context. Okay, so now that we've created our application DB context, I'm just going to copy over exactly what I have already created, and then I'm going to just tell you guys kind of what's going on. So first of all, you do need Entity Framework Core installed. So let's add this using. Let's move over our model. And then for this to work in your DB context, usually if you scaffold it, uh, your DB context based on a uh, database first or something of that nature. Usually this gets created for you or if you're doing it manually, you will need to have um, SQL Server installed. So you will need a version of Entity Framework Core SQL Server for you not to get any errors when creating your models. But basically, all I'm saying here so that you guys don't really have to worry about the database in the back is that this DB context is just going to have one table called employees and it's going to have ID, first name, last name, age just like our model and this is now set up so now this is the db context this is what our database looks like now let's tell our repository that we need to inject the database context in it for this pattern to work correctly so in our repository first of all we are going to add our db context we are actually going to include you know crazy idea our, all our methods i'm glad i caught that finally i hadn't seen it but now that we have them all here now let's actually use them correctly so let's get our constructor for our class and inject that in there very quickly. And now let's actually do the methods and do what they actually have to do. So our get is gonna be very simple. It's just gonna go to our context, it's gonna go to our employees table, and it's gonna get us all the employees. Very simple, everything's here. Our post is gonna do this. If this was a more complicated project, there could be some more checks that you could do on the back end. There could be maybe a few more things that you could do when it comes to checking the employee. But here, it's not that big of a deal. We're just going to put it right in. We're going to trust that the client's going to give us what's correct. Obviously, in the real world, you'll want to do a little bit more. But for right now, that's what all we're going to do. And then here, let me just change this stuff. It was named something differently. Whenever I did this, so E. So basically, in the put, we're going to go retrieve the employee we're going to edit. We're going to edit all the information, save changes, and then return the new employee to the front end. So just to verify at the end. And then our delete is going to find the employee to delete and remove them and then save the changes and return. So as you can see here, our code looks very simple and straightforward. And this is what the repository pattern really is. You know, you're gonna have a controller. This controller is gonna do nothing more than maybe do a few checks, check for exceptions, um, any very like basic stuff, and then just hand off the baton to the repository. And in this repository is where we now actually access the data. With that being said, we now have our DB context. It is injected into our repository. And now our repository is injected into our controller and we have fully done the repository pattern. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, learned something. As you can see, it makes the controllers, the repository very clean. Everything's very structured out. And I hope you guys can see how in the future, if I had to make changes, it's, it's very much way more decoupled than you would if your controller was just full of database calls. And this also just allows you to very easily do unit tests in the future and really be able to test every chunk of code. And it's just a lot easier on you. Trust me. With that being said, if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like. I would ask you to subscribe. We're going to do way more tutorials, way more content. I'm going to be doing unit testing on the repository pattern. So stay tuned. You don't want to miss that video. And I'll see you guys at the next one.